Mr. Gatringle, and the sky blue airplane. The day the accordion man came to the village square, all the children ran laughing and shouting to hear him sing. wasn't there. And where was Piero? He was lying alone in the middle of the meadow, glaring at the sky. Of course, Piero wanted to go hear the accordion like everyone else. But if he went into the village, the other children would make fun of him as usual. Piero stared angrily at the sky. is when a little sky-blue airplane appeared in the sky above the distant mountains.
little airplane flew closer and closer over the green woods and toward the meadow. Hardly anybody noticed the sky blue airplane flying overhead. They were all too busy to be looking up at the sky. But Piero noticed. When the little airplane came flying silently over the meadow, he opened his eyes and his mouth wide. The man in the airplane noticed Piero too. He grinned widely and leaned out of the pilot's seat, waving at Piero with his long arm. The man in the airplane must be Mr. Getringle. Piero was sure of it. The sky blue airplane came closer and closer, and then it circled around and landed near Piero. Mr. Getringle jumped out of the airplane and ran over to Piero. He grasped Piero's hand and shook it. Piero was so surprised that he just stood with his mouth open. Mr. Getringle stood looking at Piero with eyes as peaceful and deep as the evening sky. Little by little, all Piero's angry feelings melted away. Mr. Getringle let go of Piero's hand and threw himself down on his back in the soft meadow grass. Then he beckoned to Piero, so Piero lay down too. The summer breeze blew gently over them. Mr. Getringle plucked a dandelion that had gone to seed and blew the fluffy down so that it caught the breeze and floated away into the sky. And suddenly, Mr. Getringle jumped to his feet. He grabbed Piero's hand and ran with him to the sky blue airplane. He lifted Piero into the pilot's seat. Piero was too surprised to say anything. Mr. Getringle jumped into the back seat and pointed at the sky. Piero looked up too. The sky blue airplane rose silently up into the air. What a wonderful feeling! The sky blue airplane rose up on the wind over the meadow. It flew over the little cottage where Piero lived with his grandmother. Whichever way Piero looked, the airplane flew. It was like being a bird. Piero laughed out loud, and it seemed as if all the sunlight in the meadow laughed with him. Hardly anybody in the village noticed the sky blue airplane flying overhead. They were all too busy to be looking up at the sky. But Mia noticed. Mia was lying in bed, watching the clouds in the sky through her open window. When the little sky blue airplane came flying over the edge of the woods, Mia sat up halfway in surprise.
plane flew closer and closer. Mia had seen Piero a few times before, but she had never talked to him. Piero had only come to the village school once, but there he was, smiling all over and flying in an airplane, and there was someone in the seat behind him. Mia forgot all about how sick she felt and leaned out of the window to look up at the airplane. Piero noticed Mia too. He leaned out of the pilot's seat and waved to her. The sky blue airplane circled around to land beside Mia's house. Piero jumped out of the airplane and ran over to Mia's window. On the windowsill sat her uneaten lunch. Piero stood outside the window and looked at Mia's face. He wanted to say something. Finally, he pointed his finger at the airplane and said, <coughs> Mr. Gatringle swung his arms around and motioned to the airplane, too. Mia pushed her meal out of the way and climbed out of the window in her nightgown. She hadn't gotten out of bed for a while, so her legs shook. She couldn't walk very well. Mr. Gatringle strode up to Mia and grasped her hand. He gazed at her with eyes as clear and bright as the morning sky. And suddenly, Mia felt much better. Mr. Gatringle picked Mia up and put her in the pilot's seat. Then he and Piero got in behind her. Mia was so surprised that she couldn't say a word. Piero leaned over the seat and pointed at the sky. Mia looked up, too. The little sky-blue airplane rose silently up into the air. What a wonderful feeling! It was like being the wind, or a cloud in the sky. Whichever way Mia looked, the airplane flew. Mia laughed out loud, and the birds of the air seemed to laugh with her. Mia looked way up into the sky. The airplane flew higher and higher. It passed through the clouds and kept on going. This was the sky that Mia was always gazing at through her bedroom window, and now here she was, right in the middle of it. The sky-blue airplane flew higher and higher still. The sun shone warmly on Piero and Mia from above, and the wind blew upwards from below. All around them was the blueness of the sky. Mr. Gatringle put a hand to his large ear and listened. Piero and Mia pricked up their ears too and heard a faint music. Thank you.
was like being inside of a great giant accordion. Piero sat with his eyes closed and a happy smile on his face. It was wonderful being up in the sky. The light and the wind and the music all wrapped around him and cushioned him. And with Mr. Gatrengel and Mia, there was no need to talk. Mia closed her eyes too. The sunshine warmed her and the wind brushed her cheeks. The music of the sky seemed to flow through her body and make her feel stronger. For a while, Piero and Mia and Mr. Gatringle all sat listening to the song of the cosmos and imagining all sorts of wonderful things. The sky blue airplane flew on and on. Then, all of a sudden, Mr. Gatringle sat up straight and put his hand to his ear again. Mia and Piero put their hands to their ears too. Then they heard it. The song was in some language that Mia and Piero didn't understand. But as they listened, they began to feel very sad. I wonder who it is, said Mia. Mr. Gatringle nodded. He picked up Mia and Piero and moved them to the back seat. Then he climbed into the pilot's seat. The airplane flew in the direction sorrowful song. The airplane was flying over the ocean now. All at once, Piero leaned out of the airplane to stare at something below, making the little plane rock. What's the matter, Piero? asked Mia, grabbing his arm to steady him. Mia and Mr. Gatringle looked. There, on a point of land sticking out into the ocean, was a woman. The woman stood with her hands clasped, singing a sorrowful song.
was, said Mia. I wonder what the matter is. And she looked up at Mr. Gatringle. Mr. Gatringle's eyes looked very sad. I wish she could fly too, said Mia. But there's no more room in the airplane. Piero and I can go home now, so she can have a turn, can't we, Piero? Sky blue airplane made a wide circle and headed back the way it had come. over the ocean and over the mountains, over the woods and over the meadow, and as the sun was setting, it landed near Mia's house. Mr. Gatringle picked Mia and Piero up gently in his long arms. He laid Piero down on the soft grass and reached through the window to tuck Mia into her own bed. There were voices calling for Mia and Piero. Piero, Mia, where are you? Piero, Mia, where are you? Mr. Gatringle ran quietly back to his sky blue airplane hopped aboard, and took off into the sky. Mr. Gatringle's sky-blue airplane flew over the meadow, over the woods, over the mountains, and into the sunset sky. Like a bit of dandelion fluff blown before the wind, it headed across the ocean toward where the sad woman was waiting and singing her song.
Sunset light had faded into dusk, and all the children had gone home. The accordion man packed up his things and left the village square. And as he walked down the path through the fields toward the next village, he sang his song once more. Wonderful Mr. Gatringalo. Happy Mr. Gatring.